ask, actually ask you um, two little follow-up questions on this before we leave it, before we leave this entire topic, in fact, for a while. Um, so the first question is, uh, well, this, this was the first question. Let me, let me note here that the derivative, let me just write the derivative here, is still equal to 1 over 2 square root of x. And we just saw that the derivative evaluated at the fourth second, or x equals 4, uh, is equal to 1 half. Let me now ask the, uh, let me, I'm sorry, that was hypo. We saw it actually equals 4. It's 1 half times 1 half. Look, I'm, look watch, I'm going to save this, folks. I'm going to save it right here live, which equals a fourth. <laughs> OK, now, how, um, here's the next question I want to ask you now. When was the bear traveling at a rate of 2 feet per second? So the bear is traveling. And I want you to watch and tell me, when is it traveling at a certain speed? When is it traveling 2 feet per second? Slowing down, slowing down. When was it traveling 2 feet per second? How would you find that? Well, this gives me. Velocity, this gives me rate. I want to know when is that equal to 2. So I would set this equal to 2. You might think that I should plug in 2. But if you think about it, plugging in 2 is not the way to go here, because plugging in 2 would be saying, I want to know what's happening at the second second. What I'm interested in, actually, is when is it going at a particular speed. So what I'm going to do here is take. 2 divided by the square root of x, and I'm going to set it equal to 2. So I'm setting this equal. Set it equal to 2. And that will tell me for what x was the velocity equal to 2. And now I solve this by multiplying. How would you solve this, by the way? I'd multiply both sides first by 2 to get rid of that 2. And if I do that, I would see 1 over the square root of x would equal, and then I'd have 2 times 2, which is a 4. Then you might want to multiply, maybe multiply everything through by the square root of x to get it out of the bottom. And then it would be here as a 1 equals 4 times square root of x. You might want to divide through by the, by the 4 there. And I would see that uh, 1 fourth equals the square root of x. And if, if 1 fourth equals the square root of x, what does x have to equal? You could either think about it or just square both sides. And you'd see that tells us that x must be uh, 1 over 16. So 1 16th of a second is the answer to the question. At 1 16th of a second, the bear was traveling at a rate of 2 feet per second. OK. And now my last little question to you is, when is the bear traveling at a rate of a half a foot per second? So it's going very, very slowly. A half a foot per second. Well, I would do the exact same thing. What I would do is I would take the derivative and set it equal no longer to 2, but set it equal to a half. So if I take the derivative and set it equal to a half, that would tell me when the bear is traveling at a rate of 1 half feet per second. How would you solve that? You could multiply everything through by 2. Notice then they cancel. And then you could multiply everything through by the square root of x. And I think you would see very quickly that we have the square root of x has to equal 1. And if the square root of x has to equal 1, that means that x equals 1. So let me summarize all the stuff here. There's a lot of equations here. In fact, no words. Sort of interesting. No words, just equations here. But let's try to capture the spirit of what's going on here. What we've just discovered is the following. At, uh, at when x equals 1, so, so at, I'm sorry, let's start here. So at the first sixteenth of a second, the bear is traveling at a rate of 2 feet per second. Then at the first second, so a little bit later on, the bear is traveling at a rate of a half a feet per second. So it's actually slowing down. This is a slower rate than this. And then we already saw that after four seconds, the bear is traveling at 1 fourth feet per second. So what's the bear's velocity doing? Well, it's actually decreasing. The bear is slowing down. The bear, in other words, is decelerating. Because at the beginning, the bear is going very, very fast. Then sort of in the middle, the bear is going a little slower. And then toward the end, the bear is going much slower. And that was why I was able to show you this and say, watch how it starts off fast, but then it starts off fast, but then slows down. 
See? So that's, so, well, of course, in this example, the bear doesn't stop, but it slows down. So there you can get a sense of what these numbers actually mean, and also how to take the derivative of the square root of x, which is a much more elaborate function. OK, well, now we see all the different ways of taking these derivatives by definition. Notice that each and every one of the examples that we've looked at together all have the feature that I used the very definition of the derivative in order to solve, solve them. And now, you know what? Well, it turns out that I really am a huge fan of this definition. I love it. I think it's really powerful. I think it's a really beautiful idea. In fact, I think it's one of the greatest ideas of, of humankind, really. I think it should be in the top, top group of them. But you can only take the derivative by definition for so long. And even myself, as a huge fan of this, I have to admit, after a while, I get tired of going through all of the algebraic steps and then taking that limit and, and seeing the indeterminate form. If I see an indeterminate form one more time, I may just explode right on camera. So one has to wonder, is there an easy way of taking the derivatives that doesn't require us to actually use the definition of the derivative? Maybe there's some easy techniques that will give us the, the derivative without actually going through all the toil of taking this limit. The answer, happily, is yes. And I'm very delighted to report we're finally in a position to actually take a look at that. That's what's coming up next, and I'll see you in a bit. Thanks. <laughs>